To close out our session, Dominic Peters, Mechanisms for Donor Coordination. Please welcome Dominic. Thank you. So maybe if you can actually close the full screen again, then we can see the picture because the rest is just text. Uh, so let me motivate the problem of donor coordination. Suppose we have two effective altruists here. Uh, so that's Arnold and Bob. Uh, and they both have a dollar to donate. Uh, and they both agree that AMF, say, is the best charity. It's the most cost-effective charity. So they both want to give to AMF. Now, annoyingly, let's say that AMF only has a funding gap of $1. So it can only use one dollar effectively and say the second dollar is just completely wasted. So what should we do? So it turns out that while they agree on what would be the best uh, charity, they have different opinions on the second ranked charity. So Arnold here thinks that Mary would be the second best choice uh, and Bob thinks that Mercy for Animals would be the second best choice. I've not taken these to be realistic things, it's just an example. Okay, so what should we do? So in an uncoordinated outcome, what could happen is that both give to the Against Malaria Foundation, sort of naively to their favorite cause, uh, and then we'd waste a dollar. So that's not good. So there should be some coordination that ensures that only one dollar is given to AMF. Okay, so as observers from the outside, what we might suggest is that both split their donation and give half a dollar to AMF, and half a dollar to their second most preferred cause. That would seem to be an efficient and fair solution, given what we know, at least. Okay, so the question is whether we can implement such a fair, efficient outcome in any way, because if we let them go on and, be, and try to optimize things on their own, they might do other things. For example, um, Bob, say, could try to wait like it's December, everyone is fundraising and he could wait and hope for Arnold to give his dollar to AMF. And once he's done that, he can give his dollar to Mercy for Animals and he thinks that's better than if only 50 cents had gone to Mercy for Animals. Uh, right, so this can lead to donors of last resort uh, type situations and these are annoying and they can be inefficient, you have too much fundraising. Okay, so I would like to study and, and have some sort of initial attempts at that. Uh, what it means to, for donor coordination to occur, what are good outcomes, when is a allocation of donations to charities efficient and fair, and so on. And one thing that I, th one way I think is useful to think about this is to use tools from optimization from game theory and particularly mechanism design to think about this. So the general idea would be to make a central system. Uh, imagine a website and everyone puts their preferences over charities into the website and how much they want to donate, and then we optimize and calculate the best solution, and then based on this, we give money away. So we could actually build such a website, and then all EAs use it. Uh, more likely, we'd run a small experiment with just a couple of people and see how it goes, but I think even if we don't, this is an interesting way of thinking about it, because if we, can, if we know how we would design such a system, we also know more about how to think about donor coordination and what we could aim for without a system at least. And there are many design choices uh, that we could make here and it's not at all clear how to specify such a system. So for example, what does it mean to have preferences over charities? So what do you want to know about people? Do you want a ranking just like first, second, third, preferred charity? Do you want more information uh, like actual cardinal utilities? Do you want to allow people to have preferences over how other people donate? Uh, and the answer is probably true. Do you allow matching offers and so on? Um, and then once you, once, once you know this preference information, then you need to think about uh, what it means for an allocation to be optimal. And that's also not at all clear. Uh, so one thing you might be tempted to do is to allocate, to aggregate people's cost-effectiveness estimates uh, to try to exploit the wisdom of the crowds uh, and, and get better estimates overall. Uh, so one thing you could do is aggregate and then uh, you figure out what is the best charity on average according to the people and give everything to that. Uh, but some people might be unhappy with that because they disagree that the thing that on average is ranked highly, highest is the best thing. So on the other hand, you could only optimize from each person's pr perspective how well their money is spent, right? But then you lose all, this, all these externalities of how much other people like the charities to give you. So that seems to be a trade-off between having authority over where you give your money and having the benefits from aggregation. So that's an interesting problem. Another interesting problem is uh, strategic behavior. So we saw in this example uh, that 
both agents here, Arnold and Bob, might want to lie about how much they like AMF. Right? So one, if one person said AMF actually not real good, uh, then we might say, say, say Bob says that, then, then Arnold might go in because he's the only one liking AMF, so he gives his dollar to AMF and Bob gets to give it to Mercy for Animals. This is good from Bob's perspective, uh, but maybe not so desirable overall because we might, due to strategic behavior, get less efficient outcomes overall. All right, and they are actually, it's, it's unlikely that there will be solutions that prevent such strategic outcomes or if incentives to occur, but we can try to limit it at least. All right, talk more if you want to know more details. Thank you. All right, how about one big round of applause for all nine of our amazing speakers? <laughs> right on time, that brings us to the conclusion of the program in this lecture hall. We now have our last break of the day. That'll be 45 minutes. Keep in mind, you can also connect with all the speakers in office hours right now in the context of the break. Then uh, they'll also be available tonight in the poster session during the closing reception. So we've got a 45 minute break now. You should all meet, everyone will be together at 5.30 in the Great Hall for the closing talk. And then we'll have the closing reception here from 6 to 9 p.m. So just to go over that one more time, we've got our break now, office hours are now. 5.30 we have the closing talk in the Great Hall. And then 6 to 9, poster sessions and the closing reception will be for everyone. Thank you very much, enjoy the rest of the conference.